Here we go. I am loved by God. I cannot earn it. I cannot lose it. I am forgiven and made brand new. In Christ, I live with passion and purpose. I am empowered by the Spirit to be the church in the world and to live this love revolution. Come on, let's give God praise for that. All right, you may be seated. So today I'm gonna take a couple of uh, minutes to share with you um, probably a little bit of a shortened message because we took the time to highlight all of our volunteers. And by the way, on your way out, so many of our children's volunteers, I mean, there's a whole bunch of them, weren't in the sanctuary. They were back there serving uh, your, your children. And so make sure that wherever you go today, if you see somebody wearing a gray sweatshirt, that's an indication that they're a part of our serving team. Make sure you personalize your appreciation to them for all of the ways that they bless you. Today, we're gonna talk about something that I have determined as long as I'm pastor, at least once a year, I'm gonna talk about this particular subject because I believe it is the key of expressing Christian maturity and it is also key to living the most joyful life that you can. Today, we're gonna talk for a couple of minutes about gratitude. And I know for some of you, it might be a reminder, and that's a good thing. We need to be reminded of some of the things that really do make a significant difference in our lives. But I think for some of you, you might learn something that will help move the needle and make you a more grateful person. The truth is today is that we have people gathered here and watching online who experience gratitude in a number of different ways. There are some people that are, you know, are easily moved to gratitude. I mean, like the slightest little blessing would cause them to, to give thanks and express gratitude. But there are other people that are, that are very hard to move to a place of gratitude. I mean, they've got to win the lottery or they've got to have some miracle, you know, that's equivalent to Jesus walking on the water in order to have any movement towards gratitude in their, in their lives. And I just want to encourage all of us, every single person listening to the message today, those of you watching online, I want all of us to move in the direction of being more grateful. Let me share with you a scripture verse that you might have heard before, but I think it's significant in terms of communicating how all-encompassing this gratitude should be in our lives. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18 says, in everything, don't miss out on that word everything, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you're ever wondering what the will of God is, it is always the will of God to give thanks. And I think if we understand what happens when we give thanks, we'll be motivated to do it more and more because thanksgiving and joy are intimately connected. Maybe you've heard this phrase. I think it's so important for us to understand it. Happiness does not come from getting what you want it comes for being grateful for what you have. So many people have a if mentality when it comes to their happiness. If I get this, if I get that, if I, if I have more money, if I have more influence, if I have the corner office, if I have this blessing in my life, then I will be happy. Happiness does not come from getting what you want, it comes from being grateful for what you have. Today, I wanna just focus for just a couple of minutes today on the who, the what, and the when of gratitude. The who, the what, and the when. Let's start with the who. The action of being grateful requires three things to be present. You have to have a benefactor, 
You have to have a benefit and you have to have a beneficiary. If you don't have all three of those, then gratitude can't happen. Thanksgiving will not be expressed. If you have a benefactor and you have a benefit, but you don't have a beneficiary, then there is no one to express gratitude in that scenario. If you have a benefactor and you have a beneficiary, but you don't have a benefit, then there's no reason to express gratitude. If you have a benefit and you have a beneficiary, but no one knows who the benefactor is, then no one is going to receive thanksgiving. We gotta recognize that all three of these things need to be present. There needs to be a giver, there needs to be a gift, and there needs to be a receiver of the gift. And when all three of those things are present, then the potential for gratitude exists. Now for us as followers of, of Christ, we, we don't have the challenge that people who don't know God or don't believe that God exists have. For so many of the blessings that we experience in life, we know who the benefactor is. It is our God. And so this season of thanksgiving makes sense to us because we can pause and thank God for the many benefits that we as beneficiaries have received. And God himself is the author of all of these gifts, but he also uses people to bless us as well. I already read a portion of this scripture earlier during our offering time, but let's, let's get the full verse here. James chapter one and verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Everything good in our lives comes from his hand. And so we know who our benefactor is. But our ultimate benefactor, who is God, also uses people who also are benefactors of the benefits that we receive as beneficiaries. There are tons of people who bless our lives. Just think about, you know, some of the people that are involved in blessing your children, teachers and coaches and and administrators and counselors. Think about people that are a part of your family and your extended family that add blessing into your lives, your husband, your wife, your children, and maybe in-laws and then aunts and uncles and so on. Think about some of the people you work with who have been mentors to you and encouragers to you. Think about perhaps people in your neighborhood that made your life a little bit better maybe random acts of kindness. Think about your friends. And today we just took a moment to think about brothers and sisters in Christ right here at Shoreline that are a part of our three team that faithfully every single week come early and stay late to benefit you and your families. There are so many who's to thank. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Maybe perhaps we're a little bit too busy or maybe too stressed or too tired. Maybe we're just unaware. Unfortunately, for some of us, we're just a little bit too selfish and we take the people in our lives for granted. And I just want to remind you of all of the who's in your life that have benefited you. So we have the who, but then we also have the what, the benefit, the gift, and they are everywhere all the time. When, when you think about our relationship with God, when you think about what he's done for us, oh my, my goodness, we can find all kinds of things 
to be grateful for, all kinds of things to be thankful for. We, we can consider creation, the, the mountains, the rivers, the oceans. We can think about his grace that he's extended towards us, that we have the forgiveness of our sins. The fact that we have a brand new identity, that we have a, a book filled with promises from God. That not only do we get to enjoy his blessings here, but we get to enjoy, enjoy the beauty of all of his blessings in heaven that after this life is over, we get to spend eternity with him. Think about that. Blessings throughout eternity and rich blessings in this life. I loved when I heard someone say, it's not just pie in the sky when you die, it's steak on your plate while you wait. So many wonderful things that God blesses us with. In Psalm 136, we see all of the manifold ways that God so richly blesses us. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. In fact, if you were to read this passage, Psalm 136, after every phrase, it ends with his love endures forever. That's the theme of this entire Psalm. His love endures forever. And we see it in so many different ways. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who does great wonders, who by his understanding made the heavens, who spread out the earth among the waters, who made the great lights, the sun to govern the day, the moon and stars to govern at night. Give thanks to the God of heaven for his love endures forever. You need to thank God for the obvious miracles in your life. And I don't necessarily think about it every single day, but I do remember the day that I gave my heart to Jesus. I was in a small little United Methodist Church in the northeastern part of our country, and it was on a Sunday afternoon that the gospel became real to me, and I went forward that day and gave my heart to Jesus. I am so grateful for the grace of God. And, and then I think about all of the wonderful blessings that he has blessed me with. I, I think about the fact that I'm married to the most beautiful girl on the planet. And I got a picture of Laura and I on our wedding day. Come on. All you gotta do is look at that picture and see how I got so much more than I deserve. Wow. And then you know what? God blessed me with an incredible family and uh, three remarkable children. That's, that's Luke on the, the left-hand side, looking like he was adopted from a Hispanic family. <laughs> and that's my daughter, Danielle, that's looking like a, a Gap commercial gone wrong. And then there's my son, Caleb, over there on the right-hand side that I can't wait to see again when we get to heaven. God has blessed us with an incredible family. And, and we have some grandkids. And I know at this point you're thinking, are we gonna go through all the pictures? I know you might be feeling like we're a little bit like that irritating you know, friend that just breaks out you know, their iPhone and is forcing you to watch all the pictures. But I'm here to tell you, uh, too bad. <laughs> but these are our three incredible grandkids we, we got Sterling, we got Gemma, we got Nala, and we love them. Oh my gosh, we love them more than our own kids. And, and the, the lady in the back, she's, she's the nanny. Just think about the incredible blessings that God has brought into your life. There are the big, wonderful blessings that you know, might come to your attention right away if you were thinking about it, but don't forget the small things as well. Do you know that yesterday in Austin, Texas, it was perhaps one of the most beautiful days ever? 
I mean, we only get about 10 or 15 of these days in the year where it's 60 degrees, there's not a cloud in the sky. And Laura and I decided to hike around Lake Georgetown yesterday, and we weren't the only ones. The parking lot was completely full, and we ran into so many people. We didn't know any of them, but we just, you know, as we were walking on the trail, other people were walking in the opposite direction. And here's the truth. I would say 95% of the people that we met walking on that trail yesterday paused and commented on how beautiful the day was. But here's the thing. I don't know how many people knew who to thank. But Laura and I did. We're working on the trail. We're seeing the you know, blue sky and the perfect temperature, 60 degrees. Most of the time in Austin, the temperature reminds you of where you don't want to spend eternity. And when you have a day that's 60 degrees, it's beautiful. We knew who to thank. When you see a beautiful rainbow, when you get the front parking spot at the mall, the gift of laughter from your family, a high five when your team wins the football game. And let me just pause for here for a moment. <laughs> Again, I know some of you don't care, but the Longhorns won yesterday. It's awesome. And it's actually setting up an epic game this coming Saturday against the Aggies. And here's the, the truth. They haven't played each other in like 11 years, right? And now they're going to play each other for the first time in a decade. And all the marbles are on the result of this game. If they win, they go to the championship of the SEC. Whichever team wins goes. Now, just as a show of hands, how many Aggie fans do we have here today? I know there's a, there's a few, there's some, some, some Aggie fans. I, I need to tell you uh, today uh, that it's not gonna happen. I know you're hopeful, but it's not gonna happen. Not because I think that the Longhorns are better than the Aggies, even though I think that. The reason why we're gonna win next Saturday is because next Saturday is my birthday. And God loves me more. All of the ways that God blesses us, big things, small things. And don't forget, you know, the people who might do some random things like holding a door open for you or Maybe someone does the dishes who hadn't done the dishes like in the entire year. Maybe someone gives you an encouraging word. And, and, and let me just point out that it's okay to appreciate gifts that you receive that are imperfect. If your son or daughter draws a picture for you, maybe the Thanksgiving turkey that they got at school and they colored all outside the lines and you, you look at that picture and it's not perfect. I mean, it's honestly, it's a mess. But they gave it to you as a gift. You can thank God even for imperfect gifts. Thank God for the motivation. Thank God for the heart, even if they couldn't do it perfectly, even if they couldn't make their bed perfectly, at least they tried. Think about all of the gifts that you might be able to give thanks for if your standard wasn't perfection, but you looked at motivation and heart. So many what's to give thanks for. You got the who, you got the what, and then you got the when. When something good happens in our life, often we feel fortunate, excited, happy, but we, we don't always connect the dots. Just feeling the emotion of thanksgiving or gratitude doesn't necessarily mean that you've completed the loop and thanksgiving has happened or gratitude has happened. Let me draw your attention to, to one of the most famous examples of this right out of the Bible from Luke chapter 17. You're familiar with this story. Now it happened 
as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there he met 10 men who were lepers, who were afar off. And these 10 lepers lifted up their voices and shouted, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he saw them and he said to them, go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorifying God. He fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus said, where are the other nine? Weren't there 10 that were cleansed? And nobody came back to give thanks except this foreigner. And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. In this passage, I highlighted, he fell down on his face and he gave Jesus thanks. That word thanks in the original language in that, in that passage is Eucharisteo. And that's a, a Greek word that actually combines two words, grace or gift that is unmerited and joy. So in that particular word, you have these two other words. You recognize that you've just received a gift that you didn't deserve. You express thanks for that and you experience joy in your heart. That's what happened to the one leper who came back. And I think Jesus was saying to this leper who came back and gave him thanks that the other nine could have experienced a life-changing amount of joy. I am sure that all of the nine that didn't return all felt some feelings and had some emotions. I'm sure that they were thankful in their hearts, but they didn't come back and close the loop. And what I'm telling you is that thanksgiving is not a feeling, it's an action. Gratitude isn't just something you feel, it's something that you do. And my challenge to you, because human nature is what it is, I challenge you to give thanks as quickly as you can after you have received a gift that you didn't deserve. A, a sunrise that's beautiful, a sunset that's beautiful, a, a walk in the park on a 60 degree day. Don't wait till Thanksgiving season. Give thanks in that moment. A friend who gives you an encouraging word, someone who prays for you, someone who holds the door open for you, someone who makes your life better, a teacher, a coach, a mentor. Don't wait until Thanksgiving to give thanks. Do it as soon as possible. And then just another tip, make your Thanksgiving as specific as possible. Don't just say, you blessed me, but tell them how you blessed. And when you express specific, quick thanksgiving for things you don't deserve, you will live with radiant joy. Now, I wanna give you the opportunity today as we're closing to do it right now. So I want all of you to take out your your phones. And I want you to go to your uh, camera app on your, on your phone. Just take it out right now, go to your camera app. And I want you to scan the QR code. So I, I want you to do that right now. All of us are gonna do this together. Just go to your, your phone app and focus it on the screen and scan that. You should have a, a green arrow on your phone that appears after you've scanned that QR code. I'm just gonna give you a, a, a moment uh, longer. You did it right if you got a green arrow on your, on your phone. I'm gonna give you five more seconds because people are still holding their phones up to the screen. Four, three, 
to, okay. Now go ahead and, and flip it over to the next screen. Okay, what popped up on your phone right now are three blank spaces where you get to put three things that you're grateful for, one in each blank. And I want you to go ahead and fill that out right now and then hit the submit button. And oh man, Pastor Rob, glory be to God. All right, put three things that you're grateful for and then hit the submit button. Go ahead, just do that right now. This is what all of you are grateful for. Family, health, Jesus, love, work, grace, wisdom, my wife. Someone put up their football. I'm with you on that. But here's the deal. This was just a primer for you. This is not, okay, I'm done now. I put it on the screen. I don't have to thank anybody. It was just a way of all of us coming together and finding some things we're grateful for. Now I want you to find the benefactors in your life who have benefited you with gifts you don't deserve and let them know how grateful you are. I know this is Thanksgiving week and it seems totally appropriate for us to focus on it this week. And I want you to do it this week, but I also want you to do it all year long. Anytime there's a benefactor who benefits you and you're the beneficiary, take the moment to let them know. Text them, write them, speak it. Call them, but let the people in your world and especially the God who has been so gracious to you know of the things that you are truly thankful for. Could I hear a good amen? And we're gonna start right now because we're gonna have an opportunity to sing together. And this song is all about gratitude. So with nobody leaving early or moving around, let's just take this moment to express our gratitude to the Lord. Would you stand to your feet right now all throughout the building? And come on, let's worship the Lord together. <laughs> 